Hello everyone and welcome back to Flights in 2020 where I'm going to take a look at some of the sites added by the newest world update, the Italy and Malta update. And in doing so, I am also aware that I didn't really take a look at sites in the Spain and Portugal update. Uh, these have uh, come to us fairly quickly, so I didn't get around to that yet. So I do need to do that as well. But we'll start off with the west coast of Italy and work our way around and maybe I'll do a whole European tour here. Uh, but we are flying the Caproni Vizola C22J Ventura and it is available, it is a payware plane, but it's on, available for only $5 right now, so quite a steal as you'll see. And it's a cute little plane and I like it a lot. And we are going to be flying uh, from LIRJ over here, which uh, seems to be a handcrafted airport with a little star there. And we're going to take a look at some of the sites that, uh, a lot of the sites I will not be able to pronounce. Forte, Falcona, I'm... Probably, yeah. Anyway, we are going to, there's there's this uh, Forteza, Michelangelo, and then, yeah. And then uh, Rome, lots of sites in Rome. Unfortunately, LIRF, which is uh, Da Vinci Airport, or Fiumicino, uh, is not a handcrafted airport, and that's a shame. Uh, there is Torre Astura here, which I don't, I assume it's a lighthouse. I mean, it's like in lighthouse position, but we'll see. Uh, and then there's a royal palace there, and so we'll be landing in Naples, which is apparently a photogrammetry city here. So we'll see, and we'll uh, swing by Mount Vesuvius around here. So that is the plan, and we'll see how it goes. Hopefully I have enough fuel. Of course I'll be flying low, so I'm not going to get optimal fuel efficiency, so that's the problem. But, yep, here we go. Okay, so here we are in the cockpit with our two one kilonewton engines. And this is the handcrafted airport. It's got some interesting buildings over there. Almost makes me want to taxi over there to take a look, but I'll just, uh, we'll stay in the exterior view so we can take a look at them. And let's get going. Sort of a little tadpole, this plane. Yeah, that's uh, oh, we've got an F-15 there for some reason. Sometimes it doesn't do the best job of deciding what plane should be at what airport, does it? All right, uh, it's all looking very good already, and we aren't even in the special scenery except for the airport. There's, there's some nice ships there. So we basically have to turn around, which will give us another view of the airport. This plane is quite aerobatic, so they can take a fair number of G's and do fancy maneuvers, too. The way the air intakes are sort of cut into the body is very interesting. So, what do we have with this Forte Falcone? We do have air brakes on here too. But it's basically sort of splitting the flap. Effective though. Actually, the A10 sort of has that sort of arrangement for air brakes. But I think it splits the aileron instead. I think they're literally forts. I don't know if that's rendering properly, I don't know. This one looks a little bit better, but not by a whole lot. I'm not overly impressed by those. Alright, we have a long flight ahead of us for the next site. The air brake actually increases lift because of the flap aspect of it, so I have to compensate here. I'm getting whoops. Oh, the boops are my uh, elevator trim, actually. I was adjusting it. Okay. On we continue to mainland Italy. So there was supposed to be a fascinating local legend that was supposed to come out, but it's been delayed. 
It was a very uniquely designed flying boat, the Saboia uh, Marchetti S55. Now, it's uh, the previous local legend was also a flying boat, the Dornier DOX. And so I, I don't know about them constantly going with the flying boats, they're really slow, but uh, at least this one was a very interesting design. Uh, actually, the Dornier DOX is also an old favorite of mine. But I do sort of wish they had maybe one of those racing uh, seaplanes from the late 20s and early 30s. Those would have been fun. Ah oh, yes, I was thinking of the Machi MC-72 in particular. Would have been a wonderful plane for Italy. Unique. Uh, not the most obvious touring plane, but considering it's at the world speed record and awesome uh, V12 2851 horsepower engine, a Fiat by the way. Um, I, I don't know how far it could fly, I doubt very far. Um, I don't know how much fuel it had, but it'd be an interesting plane, that's all I'm saying. It'd be an interesting plane. So, yep. Hope somebody listens. <laughs> So the airport that we took off from, LIRJ's Marina di Campo, and the island that we were over was Elba, uh, sort of made famous by Napoleon, I guess. The maximum speed of this plane at sea level is 260 knots, so we've got quite a ways more. I'm not at full throttle, even though the end percentage is at 99, the actual maximum appears to be 107 107 so I have backed down off of that it seems like the service ceiling for this is 25,000 feet so I guess it is pressurized our ground speed right now is 270 knots so we are doing fairly well well there's that interesting sort of island like thing uh, on the center causeway, I, guess, I don't know if you want to call it a causeway, um, the center strip isthmus, center isthmus to it, uh, is Orbitello, a little town called, called Orbitello. Well, from inside the cockpit, I'd have to turn in order to see Orbitello, but from out here, you can see it. Uh, right there at the right wing tank. Quite an interesting town to have there. Rather nice beach on this southern isthmus here. Heck, uh, fairly significant beach all the way down. Okay, I think we'll need to descend in order to see the next site, so here we go. Corteza, Michelangelo, Civita Vecchia, 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 I always mix up whether it's Vecchia or Vecchia. This thing can decelerate in a hurry. It was used as a military trainer. Well, it looks like I've passed it. Somewhere around here, there's this harbor here. Oh, there's that fortress. Okay, I see there's a fortress there. Uh, well, there's another interesting building over here. Sort of raid like a star, but that is not our main point of interest here. You see the fortress here, right along the harbor. Very protective. But alright. Forteza is a fortress in this case. Alright. In with the air brakes. Up with the throttle. I'm sure there are things beeping in the cockpit. <laughs> um. Alright. On to Rome. Okay, here we go. Lots and lots of sights in Rome. And 
can't really get a sense of it from this vantage point. Let's pop outside. Well, there's the Olympic Stadium right there. I'm still pretty high up. We'll probably circle it around. I've plotted a few of the sites, but there are a lot of them, so we'll just have to fly around to see all of them. National Museum, huh? There's got to be a lot of that going around in Rome. The lift it gets when you deploy the air brakes, though, is just unnecessary. <laughs> it's too much. Well, there's the Vatican, isn't it? Or uh, Basilica de San Pietro. Okay. Let's see, what else is over here? Oh, it's an interesting br uh, bridge. Railroad bridge, it looks like. Well, backside view of the basilica there. And we sort of missed a few things up here, so I'm going to check those out again because we were too high. Oh, there's something in the mountains there. Or hills. Olympic Stadium, right? Yep. And the National Museum is... I'm not clear exactly what the location is of that. Oh, I think it's this this interesting shaped building over here. Right at our nose. Uh, maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> that must be something, right? Or then there's this round thing underneath us there. I don't know what that is. Another stadium. Okay. Too many interesting buildings in Rome, let's face it. There's, uh, that's the Pantheon over there. Oh, that, that, that circular one is the Pantheon. And then the one to our left is the monument uh, to Victor Emmanuel. So Pantheon is right there. Gosh, there's too many things. There's these buildings here. That thing... <laughs> I don't even know what that is. Uh right right at our nose now what is that i don't know some sort of fortress and these buildings here well looking good so yeah pantheon is that circular one and then there's the monument to victor emmanuel ii and arch of constantine Oh, there's the Colosseum. I didn't even plot that. <laughs> there's the Colosseum. We missed the Forum. Uh, there's the Circus Maximus. That's what that that's what we flew over right there. That's the Circus Maximus. Oh gosh. Okay. Yeah, lots of stuff in Rome. So one more look at things. Oh, there's the uh, main train station, I think, over here. Roma Termi... Termini. Gosh, this area over here. All these buildings look good. There's the Colosseum again. Very nice.
Okay, I think we'll move on from here. <laughs> Lots of like uh, Colosseum pretenders over there. <laughs> so next up is Tora Astura. Which I have no idea what that is, but we're going to find out. Gotta say, Rome definitely blends in rather well. <laughs> I mean, it's like, it's not as uh, filled with tall buildings as some other places, I guess. I didn't notice many tall buildings, skyscrapers. I guess it would sort of break the feel of the place. Uh, okay, I think uh, our intended site is right there at that point. Here we go again. Uh, it looks like some sort of fortress thing. Well, it's one of those fortresses that you can only get to by a bridge kind of things. There it is. Well, I mean, good choice, obviously. <laughs> if you're looking for a fortress, it seems like a good choice to me. Alright, so that was that one. Well, I'm pleased that it wasn't a lighthouse. I have enough lighthouses. I've seen plenty of lighthouses already. I'm sure there are stunning lighthouses that I have not seen, but... Okay, so next up is the outskirts of Naples with that royal palace there. Caserta Royal Palace, and then we'll be going into Naples. So we can probably ascend a little bit as we cruise along for a while. And we see the mountains over to our left there. Uh, that city to our left is Latina. You'll note the sort of very, very rectangular patch of trees to our right there. That is apparently a national park, a Parco Nacional uh, del Circio. But yep, yeah, it's just sort of like that. <laughs> That's how it is on the map too. Cloudless day around here. Just, uh, yep. I've got real world weather on, I think. So, yep. Just a nice day out. Well, we can see Naples there, uh, the swath of buildings in front of us. We're sort of going on to the northern end of it and then hang uh, right to take a closer look at the rest of the stuff. So we're going for this royal palace first. Okay. Whereabouts is this royal palace anyway? Oh, I think... is it that building over there? I mean, it must be. That's a uh, fairly nondescript royal palace, I have to say. I don't know what the story is behind it, but if you told me it was a prison or something like the Pentagon, I wouldn't be surprised. The gar gardens up front are really nice, but boy, it looks more like an institution than anything else. <laughs> Sorry. I'm, sh I'm sure the architect meant well. But yeah, uh, interesting uh, designs in the gardens up front. Let me look it up. Largest palace erected in Europe during the 18th century. Sorry, 
Swan Song, uh, is Wikipedia, of course, Swan Song of the particular art of the Baroque from which it adopted all the features needed to create the illusions of multi-directional space. Okay. In terms of volume, the Royal Palace is the largest royal residence in the world. <laughs> I mean, oh, you know, volume. Oh, I, it looks like the the forward area, I missed the, the, it sort of has a fountain in front of it. Maybe we should go back and take a closer look. It's got a whole path in front of it. It's not just that one building. All right, all right. Well, since it's so famous and everything, let's take a look. Maybe I didn't give it a good chance. 1,200 rooms. Oh, it seems like it has a dedicated aqueduct for water displays like Versailles. It's sort of based on Versailles. Yeah, I didn't really notice the aqueduct behind it there. So we've got the garden up front, the humongous building with its 1,200 rooms, and then this garden here, but also the aqueduct here. And it sort of includes this bit in the mountain. Okay. Anyway, I think we've gotten our fill of that. We can see Vesuvius fairly prominently now without its peak, of course. Uh, it wanted us to double back to see the railway station it plotted some weird curve but we'll go to the railway station first there the view from inside the cockpit it's a rail yard right there pretty clear view of Naples and Vesuvius now Except the cockpit brace is in the way. Oh, I think I see the railway station. It's that thing right there. Very swooping. Fancy sort of station. Alright, let's see from outside. Is Vesuvius the front thing or the one behind it? Uh, no, the one behind it is looking even better. We'll see. Maybe it's the one behind it. Uh, no, it is the one in front. Okay. So that is the Napoli Afrigola railway station. Well, they certainly took their time on that one. Okay, onward, onward. We see the airport we will eventually be landing at. Oh, well, let's take a look at these buildings over here first. Interesting looking sloping one there. And very nice port. Only all the port facilities in the world that they have look like this. <laughs> uh, there's some lackluster ports around. So there's a museum somewhere here, but there are a lot of photogrammetry buildings that look fairly prominent as well, so I can't tell which one is the museum actually. But all these with the 
special dome catch the eye and I don't know which one is which it's a nice roadway up there I'll just fly around here a little bit I'll close the map view I don't know which building is which in this we'll just see some of the nice buildings and move on a nice terrace thing there Oh, that looks like something important over here. Oh, one of those star fortresses kind of things. Yeah, that's uh, that's a special type of fortress right there. I'm sure some like prominent design that, and there's a castle right there. That's a nice castle too. Very nice castle. Sort of classic, sort of cla castle style. Main railway station here. Let's see if the map tells us anything about what we've just seen. There's a stadium that I've completely missed. Castle del Ovo. Royal Palace of Naples. Castel Nuovo as well. I think the one that I said was really nice was Castel Nuovo. So, yeah, it was Castel Nuovo that I said was a really nice one, but then out here somewhere, no, I don't know where that is. Okay, that's that point. And then. There's this basilica over here. And then Castel del Ovo is this one out here on the harbor, right on the edge here. Sort of like Pier 39. <laughs> uh, right under our right wing there. Okay. And where's the basilica the, of San Fran Francesco, actually? San Francesco now under us there and then Castel Sant Elmo is the star-shaped one yeah well we're probably getting low on fuel now so we'll uh, try and fly over Vesuvius and then land the hexagonal star shape was from the 16th century for that uh, castle, uh, designed by Pedro Luis Escriva from Valencia. And apparently it got uh, fierce criticism <laughs> at the time, and he had to defend it. Go figure. Uh, I think they can do more work on Vesuvius. They've got the, the very top of the peak, but I mean, what about the rest of this? I mean, I appreciate the this part. I mean, that's that's nice, but I think uh, more could be done merging it with the rest of the landscape. And it's sort of a very definite line here. I'm not sure it's supposed to be like that. Okay, all right, time to land now. Definitely so. If we take a look at our fuel, you can see, as usual, I'm really close to zero. There is the uh, rightmost of those bar indicators. Okay, well, we can see the runway pretty prominently in front of us. Everything seems to be looking good. I'm whooping the elevator trim. There we go. There's the landing gear. Okay, coming in a bit steeply here. I'll probably use some more air brakes. Uh, because of the way the air brakes uses the flaps though, it's a little bit hard to handle sometimes when trying to use them on approach. Uh, I guess too many, too much lift. I use that. Okay, and down. It's a really low set aircraft. 
I saw a sort of a landscape weirdness over to the right there for a sec. Can't see hardly anything of the runway in front of you when it's so low. <laughs> uh, hold on, let me see. I thought, uh, yeah, there's sort of a landscape issue over here to the right. That's a little bit rough. But okay, let's continue. Oh, it looks like we've got the photogrammetry over here. Anyway, that has been our tour of Midwest Coast Italy. And perhaps I will continue uh, further flights around Europe and, well, with the rest of Italy. I want to hit all the nice sites that we have now that they've added. They took so much time and effort to add these sites, we might as well enjoy them. Vesuvius is very prominent in the background there, isn't it? So anyway, as I taxi along, and let's try and ignore the up-close photogrammetry. It's never great up-close. But uh, with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.